Just trying to survive and learn to live along the way. By Foreplay on AU3. Episode 43. Chapter 43. Of Musings in a Familiar Face. Izuku never really loses conscious. He'd just been in a haze of pain, the throbbing in his head from the collision with Kachan, and the aching in his leg locked in for battle, for dominance. There's no clear winner. He vaguely registers when he's tossed aside by the villain. He thinks he hears Shoto's voice, but that may be a creation of his most than likely concussed brain. The next thing he registers is Yarozu kneeling before him, telling him to eat a tracker. There's a moment of clarity there, where he can see the worry on her face, and that really is Shoto behind her. Izuku does as she says and swallows the tracker. The next thing he knows, he's being grabbed again, and a glance to his right shows Kachan in a similar position. He has fresh blood running down his face, and his eyes are closed. Izuku looks around the clearing, and finds no sign of Yairozu or Shoto. Did the villain kill him? No, Izuku doesn't think so. There'd have to be some evidence left behind, and he sees nothing. Although, who knows how much he could trust his blurry vision. A pair of feet walk by and he flinches. It's not much of a movement in his state. Izuku tries to listen to what they're saying, but it's tough to understand. Everything is muted. Everything but the pain. All he could hear is something about a kid dying before he loses his focus again. Someone died. There's a 50-50 chance that it was someone from his class. If it's a kid, then at least it's not his dad. Izuku feels a pain of guilt at the thought, but it's hard not to be relieved at knowing one of the people he cares about for the most is saved. He knows for sure that it isn't Kachan, Yarozu, or Shoto. That leaves 16 classmates unaccounted for, plus all of 1B. His vision goes dark, and Izuku fears that he passed out. The fear only lasts until he realizes that it's a dark purple, not black that he's seeing. The mist surrounding them is familiar, and when it clears away, they're in a completely different place. It looks like a bar, or at least, it looks like what Izuku thinks a bar would look like. He's never been in one, so he can't be too sure. His leg is dropped, and he feels a brief sense of freedom. Brief, because as soon as his foot hits the floor, his arm is grabbed, and he's yanked into a somewhat upright position. He tips to the side, and instead of letting him hit the floor, someone redirects his fall, and he lands in an uncomfortable chair instead. He'd almost rather the floor. His arms are pulled upwards and tied together, before his legs are tied to the chair. Izuku looks around, trying to find Kachan, and finds him without much effort. He's sitting only a few feet away on Izuku's right, tied up, in an identical fashion. A slap to the face redirects his attention. Are you even fucking listening? Oh. Izuku had vaguely registered them talking, but he didn't notice when they stopped talking to each other and started talking to him instead. He looked around to the other villains in the room and fails to recognize any of them. A hand roughly grabs his chin and yanks his face forward. Oh. Now there's a villain he recognizes. There's a hand covering his face again, but Izuku can see his eyes through the gaps between the fingers, and they look angry. He could feel the pressure of his thumb and the three fingers on his chin. He has no idea where the other finger is. He can only hope that it's sitting as far away as possible. Got that, you little shit? Izuku shakes his head. He should really start paying attention. Shigaraki tightens his hand, and Hisuka can't help but wince. I said, that's a very special guest is coming soon. I'm sure you've heard of him, so you better be on your best behavior. Or, we might do something to your little friend over there. Now let me repeat the question. You got that, you little shit? Izuku nods as much as he can with the hand holding his face. And he finally lets him go. Shigaraki opens his mouth to say something more, 
but whatever he had to say is cut off by a groan from Izuku's right. He looks over and finds Kachan blinking quickly before he raises his head to look around. He meets Izuku's eyes, and they widen a fraction. They've been enemies for so long that Izuku can't tell what the look on his face means. The blood on Kachan's face makes him look even paler, and he still looks a little out of it as he stares at Izuku. Well, well, well. Look who finally is awake. Shigaraki walks away from Izuku. However, he finds it hard to feel relieved, as the man is now standing in front of Kachan. What the fuck do you want with us? Everyone in the room tenses when Kachan speaks, but Shigaraki lets out a laugh. <laughs> I knew I liked you, kid. Why don't you join us? Those damn heroes will never understand you. With your explosive personality and that mouth of yours, You'll fit in much better with the League. Izuku laughs. He doesn't mean to, it just sort of slips out. All heads twist towards him, and Izuku is once again the center of attention. Kachan is gaping at him, a look of shock on his face. He wishes his hands weren't bound as they are. Sign language would be useful right about now. L well, clearly you've n never met K Kachan. He's always wanted to be the number one hero, so why would he j join the villains? Izuku is silently pleasing himself for making it through the sentence. Shigaraki starts laughing again. He goes on for long enough that the others join in. Shut the fuck up! Surprisingly, everyone does. They all turn their glares back on Kachan. The shitty nerd is right. Why the fuck would I join you assholes when I'm going to be the number one hero? You can all fuck right off. Kachan is smirking, clearly pleased with himself. The smirk is wiped right off his face when Shigaraki punches him. He then proceeds to shove a rag in Kachan's mouth before stepping away from him. I'll deal with you later. For now, I've got business with the other kid. The boss will be here soon and I've got to make sure he's ready for his big performance. Shigaraki walks towards him, and Izuku can't help but scrawl down into the chair, trying to make himself as small as possible. He looks over, and the wide-eyed look that Kachan is giving him doesn't help in the least bit. Now, the boss only wants one thing from you. Then maybe, he'll even let you free after. The excitement in Shigaraki's voice makes Izuku thinks that's not the case. The man is silent, clearly waiting for Izuku to respond. What, what does he want? His stuttering is getting worse as his fear grows. It's a miracle anyone can understand him at this point. Shigaraki crouches in front of him and grips his chin again, waiting until Izuku meets his eyes before speaking. Your quirk. Izuku sucks in a breath. Could it be... Is All for One really still out there? Hot tears start running down his face, and Izuku doesn't even try to stop them. He flinches when Shigaraki lifts his other hand to his face, but it's not like he can move far away. A few of the man's fingers brush his cheek in an almost gentle gesture, wiping away his tears. Aw, no need for tears, little hero. There's a chance you'll even survive the process. Though, the boss isn't known for being very careful when he's going after what he wants. Shigaraki stands and backs away a few steps before speaking again. Now, the time is here. You just have to be a good little boy and give the man your quirk. He reaches a door by the bar and opens it slowly, revealing a man standing behind. The man is wearing a simple suit. But that's where the normalcy ends. There are tubes sticking out from his neck and a mask covering his face. He's terrifying. Shigaraki opens his mouth again, and the words that Izuku least wanted to hear, but the most expected, come out of the man's mouth. Welcome, all for one. I am kind of scared. <laughs> um... The fuck? Okay, um... <laughs>
Okay. Stop. All right, so um, chapter 44 is called Of Quirks and a Plan. Summary, Izuku and Katsuki are in the League's clutches, while the rest of their classmates are injured in the forest. What happens now? What the fuck? Um, we were having nice, ugh, I knew, I knew that so many chapters of like fluffy, like look at us, found family, we love each other was, was too much to ask for. As a writer, I should know that there is never a moment of peace. No, no, some writers just want to stab your heart out. And then the cliffhanger, really? I mean, cliffhanger for you guys, not for me. I'm going to record the next episode today. Uh, or not. Actually, it might be a cliffhanger for me. Fuck! Oh my god, there's a lot of times where, uh, pod uh, I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, shit, now I kind of want to read ahead. Uh, and, um, read ahead and, and leave y'all behind, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm nice. Yeah, nice. I really want to read ahead. But, moving on, um, I really hope that Izuku doesn't lose his quirk. Uh, but at the same time, um, quirk loses Izuku fic, whoop whoop. Um, no, I don't think Izuku's gonna lose his quirk. I'll say that. I'll say that. I don't think he's gonna lose his quirk. I don't think... I don't think this is where the fic is going. I really don't think this is where the fic is going. Um, it doesn't seem like this is where the fic is going. At least, I hope it's not where it's going. So, one can only hope. As always, my rain drops. Make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.